Welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio presented by Celebs.com up here at TIFF, Michael, Simon. Uh, firstly, congratulations on having Call Girl, essentially your first feature film, yes. even though you've been working in the industry for a long time. Was, were advertisements and TV, were they always like a stepping stone for you? Were you always like looking towards making feature films or was this just an opportunity that was too good to resist? Uh, both. <laughs> No, I've been working for some time with, uh, yeah, as you said, both advertisements and also TV miniseries, basically, uh, but kind of uh, filmic ones, uh, always trying to make it look like, uh, I mean, all, the aim was always to make like cinematic things, you know, so filmic. Yeah, so, of course, Call Girl, yeah, great, first feature, so I'm very happy to be here. And talk about the first time you guys met and why you wanted Simon. Well, we met actually, when was it, 2006, Six. yeah, for a miniseries called How Soon Is Now, that's a story about four friends in the 60s and 70s, it's like four films, four television, but each one taking place in one year, one 66, the other one 1968, 72 and 78, so we had made like four films together then, we met, you know, uh, you hadn't done anything yet. No, big. And the only time uh, I'd yeah. been bef in front of a camera at that time was the auditioning for the same thing. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so that's when we met. Yeah. Did he make your audition for this? Uh, no, I didn't. No, I didn't actually. <laughs> no, no. This one. You just called him. Yeah. No, but uh, Simon plays one of the major parts there. It's a story about four friends, you know. And so this, I mean, you talked about that uh, taking place in the 60s yeah. and early 70s. What yeah. is it about that time period that's so fascinating for you? I don't know. I, I really, I grew, I'm, I'm born in 1970, so 70s is my childhood, so some it's like going back to your childhood and you know seeing things with different eyes you know more mature eyes things that happened around you and dif there was very different times especially in Stockholm so for Korgal it was like a plus you know the fact of, of uh, being able to to travel in time I mean it's very nice to do how do you say would you say costume films or time uh, yeah, period, uh, period pieces. pieces yeah when you can really change things around and take away ugly advertisements from from modern days and stuff like that. <laughs> Simon, for you, I mean, being able to kind of revisit the 70s, I, I mean, automatically, you don't think actually fashion now includes so many different time periods. Yeah. So dressing, dressing 1970s now doesn't seem so costumey anymore, but obviously the film itself, the color tones, all that sort of thing. Yeah. But also with the costume thing, there's also this, uh, because when you see 70s inspired stuff now, then it's only inspired by that, and still it's a part of the modern modern uh, trends, even if it's, even if it's inspired by the seventies clothing. Right. Uh, but costume designers in in uh, both of these pieces that we've done together uh, has been really into finding documentary style, and that makes it look very different from from like the idea of the seventies costume. Yeah, but also, I mean, for you, were you? I mean, this is, this is based on actual events. Um, you know, the government at the time was under all sorts of, doing all sorts of things, going outside their powers of control. Was this something that you were all aware of growing up, or is this something that you kind of learned because of the film? I've learned a lot because of the film. Uh, and that's been really, uh, really an interesting trip to dive into the background material of this film, seeing things there that I wasn't aware of. And also, because how do you balance that? Because on one side you're showing how liberal the times were, how, how we were moving towards this kind of freer kind of existence. And at the same time, there was all this exploitation going on yeah. and this suppression. So how do you balance that? Well, I don't know. Um, it was a messy time, I think. There was a lot of nice things with the, with the 70s in Sweden and with the, with the government. Uh, the, I mean, the film is not a documentary. It's inspired by, by actual events, but it still takes it has some poetic license to make it, you know. But, uh, but of course, I don't know, balancing it, mm, um, we just try to, to make it a, a raw, unsentimental, social, political thriller, I, I guess, you know, focusing very much on the characters and yeah. the realism. The, the co-production aspect of it, I mean, it's at Sweden, Ireland, yeah. Norway, yeah. Or some, another Finland, Finland. Yeah. How, does, how does that work? Well, it how works. <laughs> how did all those countries come together on one, on one movie? Yeah, we'll have to ask my producer, Mimi Spong, but, but uh, we have, uh, I mean, there's a lot of Scandinavian, Swedish films that are, need to be, since we're such a small country, we need to help each other out, you know, so we often do co-productions between, you know, the Scandinavian uh, countries. So for uh, Norway and Finland, that's quite normal for us. 
Um, we also have actors in Norway, for example, that speak very good Swedish, so we can also, you know, collaborate in that way. And then uh, with Ireland, uh, that was a, I mean, interesting co-production. Uh, it was my producer who, who managed to make a deal with them. You know. Did it affect you creatively? Was well, there something that was put in? That yeah, but we had we had an English talking actress in the film. She was from Ireland, and also we did some post there. Uh, uh, people working with the set, uh, the, um, how do you say, art, so, art uh, direction, came from there as well. So uh, yeah. And for, for you, I mean, obviously the look of the film kind of matches. I mean, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy had some beautiful cinematography in it as well. Yeah. Um, you were working on that production, I understand, as well as like a second... Yeah, I was second unit. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when you work on something like that, do you take a lot from it? Are you always kind of looking and borrowing? And uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, this is Thomas, a friend of mine, and also Hoyte, who's the DP of Tinker Taylor, but we have been working for years before, you know, on television series, so I don't know. We tried to find our own style. They may be similar because of the fact that it's the same DP, but still they look different, I think. And uh, also the fact that they all both take place in the seventies. Maybe that's I don't know. I wouldn't know. You know. Yeah. And what does it mean that the film was selected also to like open the Stockholm Film Festival? Oh, it's great because uh, it's really a film about Stockholm, you know, and recreating the Stockholm of that time. So uh, we're extremely happy to open there. Uh, of course, we're also in a competition, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. So it's really a Stockholm film. Do you think there's a greater awareness of Swedish film? I know the girl with the dragon tattoos yeah. kind of become this kind of cliche thing that people talk about, and I don't know if you guys are sick about sick of it or not sick I'm of so it. Sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but you know, I use so many locations in the yeah. area. It, be, it really kind of positioned a focus, a lens on that on the country and on the scenes yeah. and locations of that country. So when you're shooting, are you conscious to try to to use or not use? locations that we use during those films or because it becomes so well known? Yeah. I wouldn't know how well known it is from from an outside perspective but yeah. um, we really tried to find very specific location for our story and those locations well they might be I mean Stockholm is that not that big of a city but still you know you can portray it so many, in so many different ways and um, I guess our film is very different from for example the, the dragon tattoo or yeah. And what about for you, Simon? Does it does it create different opportunities that people are like refocusing on that area? Yeah, of course, of course. When you have contact with international people from the industry, of course, it makes a big difference. That you really you really notice that at this time there is a lot of focus there, a lot of interest in what we do in Scandinavia and Sweden. And just from an acting perspective, working with Michael, is it? Um, do you get a chance to rehearse? Do you get a chance to... Because the stories are kind of separate at the yeah. same time uh, within the film. So how much interaction do you have with the other actors? And, you know, do you get a, a time to rehearse and a time to... Yeah, rehearse? yeah, a bit. We don't... We, at this time, we didn't work that much with, the, with actual rehearsals because we were pretty much... We talked about it, sat down before and talked about everything. And it was we a lot of research, research Re before. Yeah, a lot of research, but also acting-wise, we had sort of talked about, yeah, okay, how do we do this? Okay, we're going to do it this way. All right, good. So when I, I come to set, then I more or less know what to do from from before, more than actual doing rehearsal yeah. work. The first thing we did together, we did a lot of rehearsals. That was also a different kind of story because yeah. it was more a much more sentimental story. In this story, I mean, it was so... We really tried to be so hold back the emotion so much and just because of the fact that it's four stories laid and going on uh, people not really meeting each other just briefly so people are more isolated in this in this film you know from each other the so acting wise that's, it makes everything very like concentrated and, and, and uh, also compact. That's, that's that's for your part that's true but for the part for example oh, yeah. the girl and the brother mothers and the young girls they rehearsed a lot so they did a lot of rehearsals together you know and also because some of the scenes are so intimate that yeah. you, you really need to be able to protect them, I guess, yeah. as well, make sure they're prepared for yeah. it. Um, just a quick question about, like, when you're watching the film here, and it's a completely different audience, yeah. North America, yeah. how curious are you to watch the audience as opposed to watching the film? Uh, I was I was in the first, uh, we were there in the first screening, mm. so I mean it's very difficult to sit there and you watch your film on a big screen with the sound and everything. It was great cinema, but but but, uh, but you're just like, yeah, trying to feel out what the audience think looks like. But they jumped a couple of times and they laughed a couple of times, that's yeah. good I guess. <laughs> it was a good atmosphere. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a good atmosphere, but uh, it's very interesting, I mean it's fantastic you make this Swedish language long dark film and you have, a, you know, packed, I mean that's fantastic, it's yeah. fantastic to try, but I'm very curious to see how, how 
Well, congratulations on the film's success yeah. so far and, and for completing your first feature and, and being able to travel with it must be a, a great feeling. Yeah. So thanks for spending time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.